1999, um, they found that it in fact followed the normal distribution. Um, there is there is a lot of there's well, it's pretty sketchy. I'll just say that right now in terms of concept of type theory. Um, so just a quick summary. Um, number, so what are the criticisms and what are some problems people have found and are currently researching that they don't like about the Mars rig? Number one is that it has questionable validity. So this is the idea of, again, the horoscope effect, the Fourier effect, um, the fact that the Mars rig has never been through a double blind test, um, the idea that people respond how um, if people read something that they, they think is correct about them, they will make it correct. Um, number two is the idea that the Mars prick is very poor in general at predicting behavior, and again, this is a very known, uh, well-known social, um, social psychological theory, is that unless situational factors are very, very weak, um, personality and attitudes tend to be very poor predictors of behavior. Um, Number three is the idea that the Mars break is an SR scale, a self-reporting scale, and likewise, therefore, has all the flaws and problems associated with self-reporting scales, namely the idea of um, self-enhancement um, when we're reporting our scales, the idea of um, um, reporting towards our idealized self, and the idea of socially desirable responding. Um, number four is the idea that Mars break has very low um, or not very low, but I'd say sketchy levels of test retest reliability. So this is probably what most of you guys are saying again. Um, you take the test once, you get something different. You take the test twice, you get something different again. Um, <clears throat> number five is the idea that Mars break has, a, a, again, a sketchy scientific basis. Um, first of all, because the Mars break was based on Young's work, and Young's work was mostly based on anecdotes and um, introspection. It is something that is not considered to have great scientific integrity today in modern research. Uh, the second part to that is the idea of a lack of sufficient uh, peer review. Um, all the conferences that the Mars break papers have presented are were pro Mars break, so there is an element certainly of bias there. Um, criticism number six is Mars breaks has a lack of internal consistency. Um, <clears throat> Internal consistency, again, is that no matter in how, in what way I ask you the question, if I'm asking the question to measure the same thing, then you should give the same answer. Um, and, of course, the last one, number seven, is this idea that Mars break has sketchy um, um, analysis structure. Um, so that's the idea that uh, the, it followed a normal distribution rather than a bimodal distribution, which flies, which is a direct contradiction to the concept of type. Um, so just to end it on a bit of a bit of maybe a more positive note is that okay well other than the Myers Briggs what personality you know um, question types um, type inventories are there that maybe um, are able to compensate for some of the flaws of the Myers Briggs okay um, <clears throat> the major one I can think of that I actually right now am a huge fan of much more so than the Myers Briggs because I found that um, the more I did research the more flaws I find in the Myers Briggs. Um, so here you see is a chart of correlations between the, the Mars break and, and the ocean um, <clears throat> and the ocean model. Okay, so on the so on the vertical on the left you have again the Mars break E I S N T F J P. Across the top you have the five factors of the Big Five uh, personality model, and um, <clears throat> here you can see the correlations. Now I'm just going to stop right now to explain what exactly a correlation is. Um, because it, it's something that is obviously very dangerous if misinterpreted, as many of you may know already. Um, <clears throat> So first of all, okay, what is a correlation? A correlation is a relationship, okay, a, and a correlation is association. A correlation does not imply causation. I'll say that again. Okay, correlations do, co correlation does not imply causation, okay? So <clears throat> what's an example of this? Well, um, it's, it's very, very well supported um, and generally in research that um, uh, higher, higher rates of viewing violence on television is correlated with higher rates of aggression in children, okay? Now, correlated. Does it mean does it mean that watching lots of TV causes kids to be more aggressive, or is it the fact that aggressive kids tend to watch more TV? Again, we don't know which way the causal chain goes, and correlations are not able to tell you which chain the correlation goes, or even if there is, you know, causation in in the relationship between those two variables. Um, <clears throat> so again. So again, a correlation does not imply causation. And with that in mind, let, okay, take a look at this chart. Um, now, a correlation is basically um, <clears throat> a comparison of, of variables, generally two, um, <clears throat> and just trying to numerically identify the relationship between them. Okay. So again, as you can see on this graph, um, a correlation, okay, has a correlation or otherwise known as an R value is between one and negative one exactly. Um, <clears throat> 
And there are two aspects to the R value. The first aspect is the sign, positive or negative. Okay, positive or negative um, demonstrates uh, the relationship between the variables in the sense that what happens as they increase and as they decrease. Um, <clears throat> So let's say that you have a positive correlation. So if you had a linear correlation, so the one that went in a line and it was had a positive slope um, of the line, um, that means that as one variable increases, the other also increases. So if it's a positive correlation, they increase together, and vice versa for the negative correlation. If the correlation has a negative degree sign, um, then they are. Uh, as one increases, the other decreases. Okay. The second component of a correlation is that, um, other than the sign, is the numerical value itself. The numerical value itself does not measure the slope or the direction. It measures the intensity of the slope of or the direction. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take a look at these charts. Okay. Um, one of the major things you can immediately see is that, well, um, the the the, char the 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 categories on the Myers Briggs seem to correlate, you know, fairly well with the with the um, five factor personality model. So some of the some of the correlations you can see. So for example, um, a, a positive correlation of uh, 0.72, which is pretty close to one. Um, so what's the sign? It's a positive sign. That means that. Um, to the two variables, the Mars break and the and the five factor personality model in terms of validity, they increase together. That means that they are correlate and they share a relationship, which could possibly suggest, you know, that they are one and the same, but again we can't imply anything from the correlation. Okay? So the sign is positive, well, what's the intensity? Well, um, the intensity is a pretty big number in terms of between one and negative one. So we can say that reliably, you know, to a correlation about a point seven two, which is considered high. Uh, or moderately high, we can, uh, just looking at this chart, we notice that in terms of extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness, conscientiousness they tend to correlate fairly well with the structure of the Mars break. Um, however, again, as I mentioned, um, I am a bigger fan of this model at the moment because um, it just, in terms of in terms of how much research has been done of it, there there have been a lot of studies on the Big Five um, that suggest it is a very you know a very valid form of measuring personality. And um, in addition to that, um, one one sort of one advantage that the big the five factor personality model has over the Myers Briggs is that it is able to measure some, a fifth category known as neuroticism. Neuroticism basically is a measure of emotional stability. Um, so high neuroticism would be something like what you would answer yes to questions like I worry all the time, I'm really anxious all the time, I'm blue a lot of the time, I tend to have mood swings. Um, and this is one this is one this is one dimension that the Mars Briggs is actually not able to capture. Oh, and I have to mention one more thing in terms of uh, in terms of the idea of self-reporting. Um, the, yes, the Mars Briggs is a self-reporting scale. Yes, it's flawed in that regard. But you have to understand that. Um, it is inevitable, okay? Because what, okay? How does how does a non-self report uh, questionnaire look like? So that's somebody analyzing you, okay? Generally, a licensed psychologist um, has access to your background records, employment records, you know, criminal history, and they make uh, evaluations based on that. Now, that is very useful for say criminals, you know, incarcerated offenders trying to find out their personality because you have all that information, because you have systems in place to evaluate these these prisoners. The problem, the problem with um, <clears throat> using a non-self-report scale in terms of the Myers-Briggs is that it is entirely impractical, cost-wise, time-wise, manpower-wise. Um, <clears throat> You have to understand that you can't you can't get full case histories of people you're trying to people you're trying to type in terms of the Mars break you know sit them down for you know a really a fairly long period of time um, and try to develop and try to find their personality from that again it's not practical and it takes too long so probably arguably whereas um, non self report measures are more useful for um, incarcerated or or criminal populations certainly the uh, self report scale is much more efficient. Um, in terms of subclinical populations. So subclinical are basically like average or normal populations, such as college students, which many of these studies happen to be performed on. Um, so yeah, so those are the major criticisms of the myers break. Just some really interesting seven points to remember. Apologize for the length of this, um, and apologize for the, that this wasn't really entertaining, but I, as I warned you, um, I'm trying to inform, not to entertain. Um, so hopefully you learned you know, a bit more about the research process, maybe a bit more about um, alternatives to the Myers-Briggs. Um, so yeah, uh, the Perceiving Judging video will be posted up soon. 
um, because uh, I have two weeks of utter and complete freedom. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. And please, if you have any questions, don't don't hesitate to uh, private message me, and I'll answer them if if it's if it's very important or or if I get them asked enough. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot.